Watching Israel's Jared Firestone. Know this. Introducing the original Blood Clad Podcast, not PS. Soothing semantic. Special dedication. All the way from New York. Boom. Yeah, man. SWOT semantic. Yeah, man. Boom. Soothing semantic. Yeah, man. Big ups to the man. Soothing semantic. On another episode of Soothing Semantics, we have Jared Firestone. Now, before I continue, guys, make sure to subscribe, like, and share each episode. I hope you enjoy. I know you will. And here we are. So, welcome, Jared. Thanks for having me. My pleasure, man. So, Jared and Jared and I connected through a very close friend, Joey Benamou. Shout out to you, Joey. And he, Joey was very insistent on me having jared on <laughs> jared like is a proud hebrew and uh he is planning to go to the olympics for to representing israel and the jewish people in a sport called skeleton okay so for have all of you who see this this is a star of david the hebrews like the star i have a necklace of the star and i've worn Yamakas and keepers with the star, and uh, it's like a Jewish thing, you know. Like that's what we, yeah. we do. We wear that. So, I'm being annoyingly sarcastic, but anyway. <laughs> that's our thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, go into a little bit about your your career. Uh, you can talk about law as well, but right. give give everyone a scoop on the Olympic side of things. Okay, so sure. Uh, so the Beijing Olympics are in February, coming up about nine months out. How I got here, uh, grew up here in Aventura, Hollywood, uh, went to Hillel Community Day School through eighth grade, Pinecrest, uh, for high school, went to college, ran track there at Tulane University, and then, like most people, my athletic career ended. Started law school at Cardozo in New York City, Yeshiva University's uh, Ooh, you law said school. Cardozo. Do you know um, Yitzi Wainhouse? No. I think he went to Cardozo. <laughs> Okay. Oh uh, yeah, well, I don't. I don't yeah. know most people there, but okay. Um, so I was there my first year in law school. Just quick story here. Um, I had a TIA, which is a mini stroke, uh, oh, during sure. my first semester while studying one day, and I was very, very wrapped up in law school up to that point. And then it was kind of like a eureka moment for me. There was a couple month period where I wasn't sure I'd be able to play sports again, do anything like lift weights, play flag football, nothing. Um, that was something after my athletic career at Tulane ended that I was very attached to um, and like never quite filled that void and then when it was completely taken away uh, it was like a wake-up moment for me and I decided if I was allowed to do those things again I would take advantage and go back to living out one of my original dreams which was always to represent Israel in international competition track and field being the sport I thought I would be doing it in um, a couple months after that, 2014 Olympics in Sochi, Russia, I see the sports skeleton. Uh, my cousin gives me an idea to go try out. You know, it's not something the athletes in the Olympics, I noticed in my research, really grow up doing. Mm -hmm. uh, you can kind of pick it up later. So um, I was like, cool, I'll go try out. So I went to Lake Placid, did a little workout for Team USA. They invited me back, learned how to slide for a how'd week. You, how'd you connect with Team USA? Uh, just through their website. They oh, had wow. open tryouts. So I went. Okay. They just like work you out. You do uh, some sprints and lift weights. If they like you, they invite you to come slide. Um, most people, she's I probably started with like 20 plus people. I think only a couple of us still do the sport. Most people after that first week, really the first day, you just, you know whether it's meant for you or not when you're going down uh, slamming against ice walls at 50 plus miles an hour when you start. Um, we get up to in the seventies now, but you get enough, enough kind of gear to protect yourself. If you're slamming against the wall, how does that even work? Um, so the first time you're really under equipped, they give you a skydiving helmet, which is a lot different than the one here in front of me. Uh, you wear ski goggles. They tell you to bring like, kind of like, uh, I think I had like knee pads. <clears> I just rolled <throat> up to my triceps cause that's where you make contact with the wall. But really after that first hit, they kind of get pushed down and then it's just uh, skin on ice at that point, pretty much. Uh, so you definitely take a beating damn dude uh, <laughs> yeah my arms uh, I'll, I'll send you pictures they're just completely black that we'll week. post them we'll post them yeah um and uh but i liked it and i decided though i would be a good jewish boy go back 
finished school, ended up passing the bar in Florida and New York. Um, and then I went back for my first rookie season, Team USA, and I ended up staying in their program for like three developmental years, we'll call it. I wasn't racing internationally or anything. And then I decided that I would live out my dream and join Israel's team. And I did that two seasons ago. So this will be my third season coming up. That's awesome. So how do you, how do you join the team if they're Israel's team is, is in America? Like, how does that work? Yeah, so uh, it was founded by American Jews, and you make Aliyah, and then you're able to, you get approval from, in my case, if you were in another program before I was in Team USA, they approved for me to switch to Israel's team, and mm. that was it. Okay, but you would be making Aliyah technically if you were to join that team? Like, how would that work? Um, yeah, so I did before I started sliding for Israel. Okay. So two summers ago, I made Aliyah. Um, as an athlete, the rules are a little different, so I was able to come back here and train, and this is where I do my summer training, and then obviously during the winter I'm going where the uh, where the ice is. Okay, but do you plan on living there at some point? Uh, I'd like or to. That was always yeah. Even outside of this, it's always been a dream of mine to at least live a good portion of my time in Israel. It's mm-hmm. you know, there's nothing like being there. Just the connection uh, that you don't get anywhere else as a Jew. So uh, yeah, it's hard while doing this to actually do it. It's mm-hmm. just not practical for training purposes and fundraising and working and everything I need to do, but. Um, eventually when I retire from this, I'll try to spend a lot more time out there. Okay. Phenomenal. Uh, I wanted to just start something off right away because it, it's important. Joey was mentioning that there is about 40 K needed mm-hmm. to kind of get the program going. Do you want to kind of go into that? Sure. So each season cost me about $43,000, um, coaches, whether here, it's my sprint coach, uh, my on ice coach, the equipment's very expensive in the sport, my sled, 6,000 euros. Um, and I have other parts I need to replace every year that cost about 600 each. The helmet, obviously, mm. shoes. Mostly, most expenses come with the rental cars, the flights, the baggage fees. Um, so that adds up to the into the 40,000s consistently every year. Um, unfortunately, Israel's National Olympic Committee gives us very limited support. It's like 4,000 shekels, which is yeah. something. It helps, but most of the way I cover my costs is by working during the summer as a lawyer or um, private fundraising. Luckily, I have a lot of really, really supportive people in the community here mostly um, and kind of all over the country that uh, help out. I have a GoFundMe that I just launched last week to help for this So how, mu- how, far, how far in are you? Like realistically, how much do you need to get this the ball rolling? To get, okay. So yeah, there's obviously two ways to do it. You could go and half-ass it and not really and have shortcuts and not really get everything you need. Um, but it's so competitive and the stakes are super high this year that it's not a good thing to be doing. So right now, um, yeah, I've, uh, in the first week, people have been incredible, but I'm still about, it'd be very helpful to have another $30,000 or so. So that's kind of, so, so for. you have a GoFundMe, so I'm going to attach the link and I'll even put the, the link on the episode, meaning on the video itself. Right. Like right now, we'll just throw it in there. Awesome. So guys, if you can, even if it's. Eighteen dollars, twenty dollars. If you're Jewish and you want somebody representing Israel and and Jewish people in the Olympics, which is extremely important because you know not Jews haven't always been known to be the most athletic. Yeah, we're trying to change. <laughs> we're that, we're yeah. trying to change that, you know. And and in the past, it's it's really it really is changing. And the NBA and the UFC and, and skeleton yeah. and other Olympics MLB, and gymnastics yeah. and in um uh there was, there was an American girl in figure skating. There's mm-hmm. definitely it's becoming more prominent. Uh, but it's very important. Even if you can give a small amount, uh, it would really really mean a lot so Definitely. everything is uh tax deductible through our 501c3 for israel boslet skeleton corporate sponsors always very welcome to individuals families um i have some fun prizes on there you can check out too little little rewards okay awesome like like i don't know uh, merch like or something like that yeah I have merch um signed postcards and then for corporations or even for people i'll put your name on my sled going nice. leading up to the olympic games which is pretty fun oh that's really cool okay guys so definitely Give some, give some bread. <laughs> now the okay. So you have the, say you have the cash that you need. Right. You have the training you need. Everything's in order. Yeah. When are you going? Hopefully to the game. Like how does that work? Because okay. Yeah. So qualifying will start in mid-November, and I'll probably have they count eight races, but I'll probably race about ten on different circuits. Um, there's like a North America circuit, Europe circuit, an intercontinental circuit, and then a World Cup circuit. So I'll probably jump around on all those, mm-hmm. try to get in as many races as I can because my best eight will count. And that last one will be in the middle of January. So pretty much three weeks before the games, I'll know whether I made it or not. Okay. 
I hope, dude. I hope you do. Thank you, dude. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm stoked. I'm. It's funny because I've seen Skeleton before. I've seen it. Excuse me. I've seen it on TV. But I had to look at it again when you mentioned that you did it. I was like, a skeleton. I didn't. I wasn't sure what it was, honestly. Right. And so then I looked at it and I was like, oh, I've watched this before. Because I, I used to watch it when I watched Sean White do the, the snowboarding. Yeah. That happened. So then I would see Skeleton also, like, either before or after the right. the sport. Because it it's, it's also a kind of a you know, snow ice sport. Yeah. So, no, it's cool. You're, you, you're flying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're flying. I'm flying. <laughs> um, most people will ask... Um, 85 miles per hour is the fastest I've gone it's in Whistler. Crazy, yeah, yeah just it's pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> it's probably so exhil- exhilarating. Though. There's nothing that compares to it, but you don't even notice the speed really while you're doing it. Your brain is just so focused on the next thing you need to do. Um, yeah, it's like pretty much like the ultimate fight or flight type of hormonal rush. It's awesome. So cool. Yeah, yeah, you're just like maneuver, just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, dude. Okay, so Olympics, Olympics law what kind of i mean like there's so much to discuss right so you grew up here Mm -hmm. i grew up in new york so you grew up here and you found yourself you went and you went into law like you mentioned like like a good jewish boy and then right and then so you got you you took the bar you got into law you have that down your parents are already proud (laughs) right (laughs) and then you choose to do this and it's it's very commendable it's awesome i'm like i'm so pro jews in sports yeah it's it's very important um we ha- we get a bad rap. If you look proportionally, like per capita, how we fare in sports, say like Major League Baseball, based on how many Jews there are in America, we should have only two players, but we have six. It's not a lot, obviously, compared to a thousand players in Major League Baseball. But I do think we get it. We get a bad rap, and uh, people <laughs> hopefully starting that's starting to change. For example, the NBA we had a top ten draft pick. Um, how's Israel's he doing? How's team. he doing, by the way? Uh, he had a catastrophic injury unfortunately like the last week of the season but oh shit what happened what kind of injury because i don't follow ball anymore oh um i think he like compound ankle fracture oh so he's like out for the season yeah he missed the rest of the season but hopefully he'll be back next year denny feel better uh because he was like supposed to be like a really good yeah yeah he's like he was supposed to be a big deal luca light type of player but um yeah hopefully he'll be back next year i hope so yeah it's is israel is changing the game because mm-hmm. Israel has, it's just different kind of people. Like it really is. American Jews are not, and, and I'm not going to say all. It's a very general statement. Because right. there are plenty of, you know, college basketball guys. There, some guys that come out of yeshivas are good. I don't think like they plan to go to the NBA because it's like their parents are so not for that for some reason. <laughs> right. You know, it's just it's not like go to the NBA, go to the NHL, this it, and that. It's just not a, a possibility in your head growing up. Cause yeah, because it's not promoted right. the same way it is in other other groups, but. Right. I'm seeing, especially in martial arts, because mm-hmm. I'm following different people now, especially coming out of Israel, you see a lot of judo guys, you see a lot of wrestlers, MMA, even some Muay Thai. You're, it's becoming becoming a lot more common, Yeah, um, which is like really awesome to see. Right. Uh, hopefully in Tokyo this summer, uh, Israel, we're expecting to win some medals in those martial arts sports, so that'll be really big for yeah, us. Yeah, Sagi Muki is, is up there. I'm trying, I want to get him also. Yeah, that'd be a good one. I, I want to get some of them in person because so far I've had, um, I had Natan Levy, if you've heard of him. I yeah. had Noad Lahat. Um, I'm trying to get the Gozali, the father and son. I already, I already talked to them. I met them at a restaurant, a kosher restaurant in New York, like, what was it, a year and a half ago or so. I recognized them and I'm like, ah, the Gozali, right? They're like, um, we started having a conversation. And so I, I talked to the to the father Chaim. I'll just like randomly send him things on on Instagram like re- related to Israel. So definitely, his son is doing very well, man. He's undefeated in Bellator. Yeah, I don't know if you yeah. follow, but no, like him in the it, yeah. so he he ha- he's just very good with leg locks. He has the fastest submission in Bellator history. Really, eleven seconds. Okay, he literally just scooped in. He he slid in, got the guy in the leg lock. And was able to maneuver in 11 seconds. Then he recently just won a fight also with a leg lock. He's he he's very very good at submissions. Very very good fighter. So hopefully he'll he'll keep that up, man. But it's yeah. like really good to see. Very confident fighter. Like you know him and his dad are just very they they work very well together. So then there's this other up and coming young kid. He's like 20 years old. Eli Barzilai. I don't know. So yeah. So he um, I was supposed to do an episode with him. I I apologize, Eli, if you're listening to this. <laughs> no, like we ha- we scheduled a time and I couldn't make the time work. So I have to get him on as well. But he was like ready to do it, and I was the one who like screwed up the time, so I feel bad. Um, but we'll hopefully get that taken care of. 
Um, but it's just like awesome to see, you know, and they're like, they're so into it. Yeah. All of them. Like Noad's an animal. Natan Levy's an animal. Right. Eli also. They're like just so, yeah, dude, they're so like, they love what they do, man. It's all they do. Yeah. You know? And it's really nice to see that. You know what I mean? And they're also, they're just really good people. They're really nice, good people. Right. See, I didn't mean to completely go off <laughs> from, from the main, the main no, guest like here. No, I like talking about all, all But all yeah, just all in all, just Jewish, yeah. Jewish athletes in general, man. It's just, it's, I'm so proud of that. Yeah, like, bring some knockouts to the uh, right? drive. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's what we're trying to do. Because we can't necessarily rely on like Irving Goldsmith to like bring us the, bring us the gold. You know what I mean? Nah, yeah, Irving's I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> you guys do it. I do the sports. <laughs> I just I just want to read the paper. <laughs> yeah, but Irving's the one supporting us, so thank you. Right yeah, now. okay. Yeah. You need somebody backing backing with the dough, right? <laughs> exactly. I'll send you write you I'll write you a check. <laughs> yeah, listen, it helps, man. Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. So, as as a Jewish athlete, especially mm-hmm. someone who's trying to get into the Olympics, right? Have you faced that? Have you had people that were kind of nasty to you? nasty to you yeah so personally like nothing vicious um a lot of my like the world cup races i've done um we're in austria germany when i'm out there this is something my fellow athletes don't think of like when i talk to my i have like a teammate not like officially teammate but i train with a guy from ireland and when i told him this he's like he never it never crossed his mind that when i'm going we're in germany and we go into mcdonald's wherever I take off my jacket. It's 10 degrees out. I take off my jacket, which has the uh, flag of Israel on the sleeve, and go in wearing whatever T-shirt I'm wearing underneath. Um, and it's just something we have to be mindful of that other athletes don't need to think of. And on the contrary, something they don't think of is people, it's, it could be their first interaction with a, a Jewish person, or they might have some preconceived notions. So I had to go out of my way in a way that they don't need to. So, for example, if I'm training in this same track in Germany, uh, there's a lot of tourists who come in to do little bobsled rides and just observe, and uh, they'll come up to the top, and our equipment's sitting there, and like I mentioned, the blades underneath our sleds are worth 600 euros each. Uh, people are very protective about them. Like, no, the worst you could do in the sport is touch somebody else's runners. They're called the, the blades underneath. But these tourists will come up, and they want to see what these look like, and they're touching my stuff, and the other athletes would not stand for that. They'll, like, tell them to go bleep themselves but i want to let them do it i let them do it and then i talk to them and then they see me go to the line and i put my helmet on as the big star of david and for me that gives me um it's like part of my mission just as much as going to the olympics is to be that type of ambassador for israel and uh kind of let people know what we're all about yeah that's special yeah because you there's wow because right out right out of the gate there are obviously people who aren't going to like seeing that right but when you make a, a good impression, yeah, then right. you're doing a lot of good, yeah. But at the same time, I always say that there's only so much you can do. Because like, even if you're good, man, and you do all these nice things, some people who just are not going to like you for the simple fact that you're Jewish, you know? Yeah, exactly. So it's like there's only so much you can do. Like I just find that some, sometimes Jewish people go too far out of their way right. for people. You know, you should, you should be a good person for the sake of being a good person. But sometimes you, you, you stretch yourself out so much hoping that it's going to change people's minds, and, and I'm sure it does to a large degree, but there are some people that just don't accept it for the simple fact that they don't accept it. Yeah, no, a very <laughs> small portion like, of people will be like, oh, yeah, that Bob Slitter uh, in Koenigsee, he was really nice, so, like, I'm going to support some Israeli Yeah, yeah, they, there's just, there's, they have so much negative, they have so much of a negative thought process a lot of the time. There's only so much you can do. Yeah, but... um. You know, gotta do what you can. Yeah, no, no, no it doesn't. That doesn't <laughs> yeah. negate what I'm saying. No, before. no, I get what you're saying. You don't like. I don't want to spend too much energy like trying to be the nice guy. And uh, at the end, I do need to focus on the run I have coming right, up. For example, right. in that situation, or what I need to do personally. Um, can't can't worry about what people say or think about Israel mm-hmm. affect my passion. So 100. Yeah. percent Because I feel I find that if anything, if you if it if you p- try too hard, it almost seems like you're trying too hard. You got what I'm saying? Mm, right. Because I was like, why are you trying so hard for me to like you? Yeah. It's kind of my thought process as opposed to just being like, listen, I'm Jewish. Hope you, I hope you're cool with it. Right. Let's have, right. go out, have a drink. We'll go out and have some food. Watch <laughs> me, watch me do my thing. Hope you like me. Yeah. There, there's know? something to be said for humanizing, like, especially when you think other countries, like how we think of Iran and then to see, like, I think there's a big story with the, with the, uh, 
judo guy yes, with the Israel yes. and the it's Iran. And that does give you a different perspective on separating the people from the government. Mm-hmm. Um, that was very nice. Yeah. So, yeah, try to be mindful. Was of that, that Iran? Too. Iran or Egypt? No, that it was Iran, and then he was, was um, he was killed for like by the Iranian government. There's like a story. I don't think it was. I don't this know guy was, was killed. It. Yeah, there's an Iranian wrestler. There's actually been multiple, um, and he was in a protest, anti-government protest in Iran, which is pretty reasonable. To, but was yeah. he purposely targeted to be killed, or was it? I think because he's like um, a public figure, and then they framed him for this murder that didn't happen. Um, and then just like executed him, basically no trial. Damn, so, dude. Yeah. I know. I saw the video of Sagi Muki mm-hmm. with the Egyptian the guy. The one who refused to. And he didn't like, shake his uh, hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, bro, you lost, man. Like, <laughs> be a. That was also part of it. Like, it's one thing if you hate Israel, but then you lose to, to an Israeli player and you're just like a sore loser. Sore about loser, it. yeah. You know? And sometimes they won't even fight the Israelis. And, 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 and yeah. Sagi just like put his hand out. He didn't shake his hand. And Sagi's like. All right. Yeah, he was. He, I don't even think he made that face. He was just. He was very nonchalant. He's like, "All right, buddy. Like, yeah, whatever." You know, <laughs> well, that's the only thing you could do, right? Yeah. Like he, to- he, he acted like a man about it. He could have been like, right. You know, like he totally was a gentleman about it. So yeah. Um, Take that road. Yeah, dude. It is what it is, right? Yeah. This is a very cool. <laughs> very cool. So you, but when you actually play, you wear this, or do you wear something? No, that's my, that's the helmet I slide with. Yeah. Okay. Um, because you were mentioning you, you have a... like you have a skydiving helmet. Okay, so when I first started, they just throw you a skydiving helmet. Like this helmet costs six hundred dollars. So before I do the Damn. sport, I'm not going to buy that. Um, so they just throw you an old skydiving helmet. You wear ski goggles under it, and it's good enough to. It's not fast, but it's good enough to protect your face somewhat <laughs> when okay. you're the g-forces are pressing down on your yeah head and what's what's with the tape the tape is just over the uh little visor screws just uh for aerodynamic purposes like yeah. i'd rather the wind also they don't pop out but okay um yeah it's better for the wind to be going over the tape than over like the bolts uh, the screws that have the uh the holes in them oh because like air can pass through is that what you're saying yeah exactly so that's the first thing the the wind's hitting is my face so yeah okay yeah dude that's that's phenomenal <laughs> dude joey was so stoked though he's like you have to get him on you have to get him on <laughs> he's like my biggest uh fan fan so he he's like um i'm not like in skeleton we don't have big fan club like maybe the guys in lavia or germany do um but yeah your skeleton <laughs> oh look it's your firestone right i'm mr firestone thank you for coming to the germany to deutschland <laughs> uh but he, yeah I, I met joey a few weeks ago and he's uh but he, he's been following he went to school with my sister and he was like super pumped uh so it was cool and he's like yeah yeah we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get you big i was like all right so this that's is the awesome. first place he sent me that's great dude i'm so happy i hope i can exponentially build your following and and build your fan base thank you really have people following you that's awesome stuff it's awesome sauce it's <laughs> great dude no i'm, I'm I just I want more and more athletes to be involved. Like I I for one have never really been any serious athlete. Right. Other than like I love playing basketball when I was younger. And then just as time went on, I just I don't know, I lost interest. But that was like my thing. When I was younger, every day after school, during school and after school, always always playing basketball. And I followed it religiously. I knew every player, my entire bedroom wall yeah, was perfect. full of posters of every player I liked. So, what are yeah. the workouts that you do to kind of stay in shape? You'd so you pretty much train like a trainer track. because okay. the beginning in the summer, um, there's no ice anywhere. So you train like a sprinter for the push start. Um, so I'm lifting weights, I'm on the track running, um, just working on my general fitness. And I also have a cognitive coach that I'll do um, brain workouts basically with to pick up my decision processing, make that faster. Uh, he wor- he works with a lot of uh, MMA fighters as well, mm-hmm. like Dustin Poirier and. Um, he works with Dustin Poirier. Yeah. Hold on, and this is a guy you you co- this cognitive guy you you talk to all the time. I see him um, like right now. I see him probably every ten days, and as the season gets okay, closer, I'll could see him you more get often. me in touch with Dustin Poirier? Is that a possibility? Cause <laughs> well, I know it's a big stretch, but I know Dustin is in Florida. Yeah, so he's training. Uh, so this guy's in uh, Deerfield, so he's here right now. Actually, he was. Um, I did this drill the other day. He's like, oh, you beat Dustin's time. So 
damn yeah, really yeah yeah because i would first off i would get in touch with this guy if if, if you could do that but yeah i'm a big fan of dustin poirier so like if oh, i really? could yeah if i could meet him and like do a podcast uh, I'll, with him that'd I'll, be, talk, I'll talk to nick yeah that would be it. huge man like <laughs> I, I really that would be yeah i haven't met him amazing yet. like we train at different times it's always like after but we're competing against each other it's not the same time with this with this coach do you have something on youtube i texted you um yeah you did you did there, you yeah. did you're right yeah um Right here, perfect. Conex World Cup. What do you actually call the the track? Okay, yeah. the track. Yeah. So what do you? How do you avoid smash constantly smashing into the walls of the track? Mm -hmm. So it, it all depends on the exits, how you're coming out of the curves, and the angle it's sending you on. That's going to determine whether you're hitting the left wall, the right wall, or skidding anything. All the bad things that can happen. Okay, so. Jared, I appreciate Jewish the Jewish jet. Jewish jet. I appreciate you coming <laughs> on. I appreciate you coming on. Thank um, you. Yeah, thank you. For, yeah, my pleasure, man. Thank, thank you for for representing Israel and Jewish people in a in a very very cool sport. Of course. Uh, guys, make sure to check out his uh, Instagram. What other social media do you have? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, J Fire Israel Slider. Uh, the Jewish jet was taken by some like eleven year old kid, so uh, I have that. Uh, my website, JewishJet.com. You can subscribe and. Uh, it's a good way to follow my journey too or facebook feel free to add me awesome okay so guys make sure to follow his pages i'm going to drop all of the all the names and it's been an absolute pleasure thank you sir yes my pleasure best of luck killing it and uh until next time make sure to subscribe like share and stay tuned every sunday at 9 a.m eastern for new episodes take care guys Thank you.